Wow, here we are again, folks, Brother Peter, with tidbits from the Word. Uh, I've studied and wrote down all this stuff and everything, and then uh, I keep finding new and 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 finding new. And finding new. I tell you what, uh, chapter 2 of the book of uh, Second Peter, uh, to chapter 2 of Peter, is of uh, 1 Peter. It's inexhaustible. It's inexhaustible. I have pages and pages and pages and pages of notes on this one little chapter. 25 verses. And it's inexhaustible. And it said how to grow spiritually. And then he says here, if you want to grow spiritually, read this verse. As newborn babes desire the sense of milk. Of the word that you may grow thereby. If you had not got any milk when you were a baby, you didn't grow. I think perhaps some of the problem with some of the people today who use the word Christian lightly. Christian means Christ-like. Christ never smoked. Never swore. Never drank. Never sinned. And that you're going to say, you're going to use the word Christian? You're going to say, I am a Christian? Are you? Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror of the Bible. And ask yourself, am I a Christian? Are you a Christian? Can you prove you're a Christian? If you were put to the test on an eight-hour day today, and somebody who's a Christian followed you around with a pen and a paper, could they write down at the end of the day, I believe this man is a Christian? Or would he write down doubt, 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 all day? Would he write that down? I doubt he's a Christian. 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 If you are a Christian, if you have living water in you, it is supposed to spill over on somebody else. I can be in a group of people and, and be polite about it. And some guy cussing and swearing and saying, Man, you know, God, you know, Father, you mind me and me. There was a day when I talked just like you do. And uh, God delivered me from that. He took all that cussing away from me. And do you know from the day that I got born again, I was a newborn baby in Christ in a spiritual life. I have never said one of those cuss words. God delivered me from that. And 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 and, the, and then the guy usually will say to me, and I've had him do it, Oh, well, I belong to the so-and-so church down here. I don't care if you belong to all the churches in the world. If your tongue has not been delivered from the world, then you're still living in the world. And you're not living in Christ. If you are still doing the things of the world, you are still worldly. You can lie to yourself if you want to. You can sit in church every Sunday until the weatherboards fall off the building and not go to heaven when you die. What happened? You lied to yourself. You didn't really get in. You turned a new leaf. Turning a new leaf is not salvation. Salvation is saying, Jesus, I am a sinner. And I want you to deliver me from being a sinner. And I want you to make me a saint, spiritually speaking. And you become a saint. Now you're not a sinner. You're a saved sinner. Now you're a saint. And if you're a saint, you don't do what sinners do. You do the opposite. And you have to learn that. And that's something you get when you get saved. Submit yourself. To every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be from the king or as supreme. He's saying, submit yourself to God. Everything, submit your life to God. <clears throat> Remember now, verse 2, as newborn babes desiring to be fed with the milk of the word. The milk of the word. That's where we are. <laughs> we're, in, we're in the book of Peter. This is a a bottle baby book. It's a bottle baby book. 
Second Peter. It's for bottle babies. Those that just got saved. He's saying now, do this. Separate yourself from all that you did before. If you stole, steal no more. If you lied, lie no more. If you cheated, cheat no more. If you, uh, whatever you did, do no more. You are now have become a great tree, like those trees, cedars of Lebanon. And you can be seen afar off as a Christian. Like calves in the stall. Malachi 4, 2. And to a holy temple. You're turning this temple that you have right here, that God has now entered. You said, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and say, my soul, God entered. Now you're, you are the temple now of God. <clears throat> and if that be the case, in grace... In 2 Peter 3 and 18, over here in chapter 3 and verse 18, we talked about it last week. And in verse 18, he said here, what did he say? He said, for Christ also hath once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the Spirit. Wow. Hey, I was one of the most wicked human beings that ever lived. And God killed it all in one day. He put it all away in one day, and he made me a newborn. And then I began to live new. I kept my cigarettes for one year after I was saved. I was delivered from cussing, swearing, stealing, lying, cheating, uh, uh, from alcohol, from all of that. And I kept something. And that one I kept for one year kept me back. Every time I lit one, I like to faint it. Because God said, I delivered you from that. I delivered you from that. I delivered you from that. Are you still doing things you were delivered from? Or have you been delivered? Or did you receive the deliverance? Or are you really saved? Did you really mean what you said when you said God saved me? If you really meant it, then you're going to be different. If you're not different, you didn't mean it. You lied to yourself and you're not saved. What you need to do is like me. I claim to be saved. Several times in my life I claim to be saved with an alcohol bottle in my hand. Oh, I'm saved. I'm just out of the will of God. No, I wasn't saved. I lied. I was not in the will of God ever. If I hadn't put down the things of the world, I was not his child. He said, leave all behind you that you did before you were saved. All. A-L-L. -L. No, there's no room for anything if it's A-L-L. -L. If it's all. All is passed away. Behold, all has become new. What is new? No more alcohol, no more cigarettes, no more cussing, cheating, no more doing all these things. Wow, so it's new. Are you one part of the 40% or even the majority in the church, the 60% who has not given all to Jesus? And if you haven't given all, there's a good possibility you haven't given any. Period. You were convicted. And you said the prayer, but you didn't follow it. You didn't mean it. And now you're sitting there saying, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm a puny Christian. There's no puny Christians. If you are a Christian, a real Christian, it shows. <clears throat> and if it doesn't show, you aren't a real Christian. Uh, you say, Brother Peter, are you trying to get people to doubt your salvation? No, I'm trying to get people to check themselves out and see if they have salvation. Do you have it? Or are you playing church? Do you walk out of the church before you even get off? The, before you even get on out of the vestibule, almost you've got a cigarette in your mouth and you're lighting it up. You're saying, God, I came to your church this morning. I heard your preacher preach against sin this morning. And I'm not going to believe him. <clears throat> I'm going to light the cigarette up right here, just outside the door, and show him that I didn't believe what he said, that smoking is a sin.
that anything other than serving God that doing what the world's doing is a sin. So I'm going to show him that. I'm going to go ahead. I got news for you. When misery comes into your life, when misery, by the way, misery is already in your life. You're already a miserable wretch. If you are truly saved and you're still smoking, you're a miserable person. How do you know, Peter? Because I was there. <laughs> I've been through it. I was there. And because I was there, I know what it's like. You, you, you're taking one little old sin, Peter, smoking. One little old sin. One little old sin, keep it. Well, what? Does stealing one penny make you a thief? Answer that. Does lying one lie make you a liar? Uh, does drinking one drop of poison poison you? Yes, it does. So that's where you are if you're there and you're not tr trying your best to walk away from all sin and follow God properly, then you are filling yourself with poison. And you will be corrupt yourself and you can't get a prayer answered and you can't get to God because of it. I want to tell you a little story about a woman that had had five husbands in a few couple of minutes here. So click on to the next excerpt and see what Jesus tells her and how she got delivered and what she did when she got delivered. So we'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.